as we invite Reverend David to share God's word today. Well, good morning, CUR. Blessed New Year. Uh, well, before I go any further, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I think I was wearing the face shoe and, and uh, someone captured uh, it on screen and they thought Pastor had become a vampire because of the reflection. So if you can help me, if there's a fangs, if there are fangs coming out from my teeth. <laughs> How many of you know that in a Christian church, we don't believe in sucking blood, but we believe in letting blood? Amen? Because Christ let off His precious blood for you and for me, that we can be redeemed and saved. So if you can just help me, my friends, uh, make sure no fangs are coming out today, yeah? Well, as, after experiencing such a tumultuous year in 2020, I think all of us are looking forward to a brighter, more stable, and a more blessed and predictable year in 2021, amen? We're praying that God will go before us this year, and I do believe in my heart that this year will be a turning point for us. 2020 has been a very challenging year. There are new norms, uh, challenges, uh, adjustment at work, in school, as well as back at home. Uh, even though a few vaccines have been endorsed and uh, approved, it will still take time for, for it to be rolled out and be administered. So we are really not out of the woods yet. We still need to be vigilant. Uh, that is why as you come in uh, today into the hall, uh, you would have been given a, a face mask. How many of you have that? Yeah, so if you have not picked up your copy, uh, please do that uh, after the service. A very beautiful face mask with our church logo printed on it. So we pray that that will be a blessing for you. But it is also a reminder for all of us to continue to keep safe uh, and to be vigilant going forward into 2021. I guess you will agree with me, for Singaporeans, one of the greatest impact of all these restrictions is perhaps the travel restrictions, isn't it? As Singaporeans, we love to travel. Uh, how many of you usually take a holiday during, you know, take a I mean, trip overseas during the holiday time, like in November or December? Most of us do, don't we? But this year, Singaporeans are going nowhere except to the shopping malls. So you find that the shopping malls are so crowded, you know, even though, uh, you know, that we are still cautioned, being cautioned about, about the pandemic and so on. But everybody just can't stay at home. We got to go somewhere uh, and we have gone to the shopping malls. Travel restrictions. And against that setting, it provided such, a, such an interesting contrast, isn't it? As we come through the Christmas season. Why do I say that? Because as we go through Christmas, we, we go to the Bible and we read of many accounts in the Bible surrounding the birth of Jesus where different ones went on a journey. We saw how Mary and Joseph, uh, where Mary was almost to full term, carrying Jesus to full term in her last trimester, they had to make that journey to Bethlehem simply because Augustus had commanded, uh, given the decree that a census was to be taken in his entire empire. So they had to make that arduous journey to Bethlehem. The most inconvenient, but they had no choice. They had to obey the king's command. And then after Jesus was born, they had to escape and flee for their life because of the threat of Herod the Great. Making that journey. And then last week, uh, on Christmas Day, we saw how the wise men from the East make the journey, leaving behind their families, taking almost two years of their time, uh, searching for Christ, searching for Jesus. As I thought about these journeys, I could not help but reflect on my own spiritual journey this past year. I asked myself, do I identify more with Mary and Joseph? This past year, did I feel like a helpless vessel tossed and blown about by the storms of life, directed and dictated by forces beyond my control? Or was my journey in 2020 more like the wise men? Yes, there were dangers, they had to face real threats from wild animals and bandits along the way. They had to negotiate difficult terrain and brave the elements. But in spite of all these hardships, they remained committed in their spiritual quest. They remained focused on their search for the Christ child. And they were rewarded at the end of their journey. 
And as I wondered what kind of journey is before us in 2021, I was led to another familiar story about journeying in Genesis chapter 12, the story of God calling Abraham. And let me read for us in Genesis chapter 12. If you have a Bible with you, you may want to turn to that passage. We're going to read the first five verses. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 5. The Lord has said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, all the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. A very familiar story uh, of our, the father of our faith, Abraham. And as I pondered this story afresh, its significance for the new year became even more apparent to me. You see, the story of Abraham marked a major turning point in the course of human history as recorded in the Bible. Up to this point, the story of mankind was filled with sin, darkness, and gloom. If you were to quickly browse through the first 11 chapters of Genesis, after the two chapters of giving account of how God created the world, the third chapter recorded for us the fall, how Adam and Eve rebelled against God. And God came with His judgment. The land was cursed. Work became difficult for Adam. It became a burden. It was only through his painful toil would he now eat of the fruit of his labor. Eve was pronounced with a judgment too. She would suffer pain in childbearing. There would be conflict in human relationships. You know, the wife trying to lord over the husband, the husband trying to lord over the wife. There will be conflict in human relationship. And both of them were banished from the Garden of Eden, the place of blessing. Then when you flip the page to chapter 4, it didn't get any better. We witnessed the first murder in human history. Cain overcome, overcame by his jealousy for his brother, Abel murdered him out in the field. And as a result, God banished Cain to wander the earth. Then in chapter 6, as human race began to increase in numbers over the earth, their wickedness expressed in evil thoughts and violent actions again brought God's judgment through the flood. Only Noah and his family's family were saved. After the flood, Noah and his children repopulated the earth, but they continued in their rebellion against God. The whole world spoke a common language, we were told, but they wanted to do something. They wanted to do something great. They wanted to build a tower that would reach out to the heaven. Now, there's a significance in this. And, and in picture form, what the Bible is trying to tell us is that mankind were acting in defiance against God. By building a tower that could reach out to the heaven, they really wanted to be able to manipulate the heavenly forces, and to control God. So God came and God judged them. God confused the people and the Bible says God scattered them over the earth. Then, when you, came to chap when you come to chapter 12, we see a new beginning with the calling of Abraham. God, who had scattered mankind over the face of the earth, now promised that He would gather them by His grace. And through this one man, Abraham, God was going to unite the human race again and pour forth His blessings upon them. Finally, after nine chapters of darkness, gloom, barrenness, a ray of hope. For many of us, 2020 was a year of uncertainty, wasn't it? Darkness, barrenness. But I believe like the story of Abraham 2021 will be a turning point for many of us. Somebody say amen. May this be a year that brings God's promises of blessings and fruitfulness. Indeed, God's word to Abraham was a word of blessing. God promised that He would make Abraham into a great nation. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse 
and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. True enough, what God promised, He performed. I, I do not need to bring you through all the different chapters. You know the story by heart. Abraham became a great nation. God gave Abraham and Sarah a son in their old age, right? They named him uh, Isaac. And out of Isaac came Jacob. Out of Jacob came the 12 tribes. And then they multiplied. And from this one family, they became a nation. A thousand years later, in the time of King David, when he took a census of the fighting men in his kingdom, there was about a million fighting men in the Jewish empire, in, in David's empire, excluding women, old men, and children. They had become a great nation. When Abraham subsequently came to Canaan in verse 7 of chapter, uh, chapter 12, God promised to give him the land. Then again in chapter 15, God actually delineated, marked out the boundary lines of this land. And that promise came to pass at the zenith of King Solomon. In his empire, the kingdom of Israel stretched from the U river Euphrates in the north all the way to Egypt in the south. But even then, as we read the story, God's promise to Abraham was only partially fulfilled, wasn't it? The question remained, how will all the families of the earth be blessed through Abraham? God's promise, you see, my friends, was not just to Abraham or to his physical descendants. If that is so, then only the Jews would inherit the blessing. But God in His great wisdom chose Abraham so that through him, the Savior of the world would be born. Remember the genealogy that we read through in Matthew? Through Abraham, this one man, Jesus Christ would be born. Jesus was the seed. Jesus, the physical descendant of Abraham through whom, through whom the blessing will flow to the nations. Now, for those of you and me, who have put our faith in Christ, regardless of our, of our ancestry, we can become Abraham's spiritual descendant. It is through Jesus, the seed of Abraham, that the nations can become spiritual seeds and be blessed. Listen to how Apostle Paul explained this in Galatians chapter 3. In verse 7, he says, Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Faith, children of Abraham. Verse 9, so those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Verse 29, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How many of you believe in Jesus Christ? Can I have a show of hands? I'm getting worried. Some of you are not lifting up your hands. You know, the Bible says if you do, then you are a seed of Abraham and the promise that God gave to Abraham is extended to you too. Why was Abraham chosen out of so many people in the world, you may ask? Are the Jewish people somehow more special than the rest of the nations of the world? Are they more righteous, perhaps? More loved by God? Well, the story of Abraham reveals the spiritual principle of election. That's what Paul says in Romans chapter 9. Out of many, God called Abraham. And then later in the story, we see this principle of election at work too. God chose Isaac, not Ishmael. God chose Jacob, not Esau. God chose Judah of all his brothers. And through Judah, Jesus came. Was Abraham more righteous than his peers and so found favour with God? No. Abraham and his family were not even worshipping Yahweh when they were called. Do you know that? Joshua, at the end of his life, gathered the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 24, listen to what he said. Joshua said to all the people, Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. Abraham didn't even know about Yahweh when God came to him. He was chosen purely by God's grace. Similarly, out of so many in our generation, you know what? God chose you. Look at your neighbor and smile at them. I know they can't see your beautiful smile, but perhaps through the twinkle in your eye, they can see. God chose us out of the multitudes in our generation. Were we more righteous when God called us? No. 
are we more deserving now after we have called? We are called? No. I do not know how 2020 was for you. But I think for all of us, it was a year of great shaking. But more than coping with the uncertainty of the circumstances, I suspect for many of us, the most difficult part, if we were to reflect and think about it, was learning to cope with ourselves. Isn't it? We were forced to face up to our true selves in 2020. When we had to work from home or stay at home for our home-based learning in school, we read of stories of how many families begin to struggle to share even a common space uh, over extended hours in the day. You know, usually pre-COVID, everybody's off to school, everybody's off to work, we come back late, we barely say hello before we secure for the night and sleep, and then the next day, the same old rhythm goes again. But when we are forced to live together, tensions began to rise. And we realized that we have not learned to live with one another, even back at home. Our own selfishness and ugliness began to surface. Maybe we have been so caught up in our own personal pursuits that we have neglected these significant relationships that God has given to us. Others had to cope with changes at the workplace. Some were retrenched and had to learn to trust God for new open doors. Those who remained behind in their workstation, I mean, literally workstations, did not fare much uh, better. Those who managed to keep their job now had to deal with an expanded work scope, heavier workload with a reduced workforce, isn't it? Coping with the demands and the stresses. As we deal with all these demands and stresses, the true condition of our inner life began to surface. Our fears, our insecurities, our selfless, uh, selfishness, our lack of faith, whatever other forms the darkness may take. But I want to suggest to you that even as we come to confront with all this darkness that's within us, that itself could be the greatest blessing that God had given us in 2020. Why? Because only when we are willing to confront our own darkness will we be ready to embrace God's grace and kindness in the new year. The question is, do you still believe that God has set His eyes on you with affection after coming through such a tumultuous 2020? Do you, do you believe that God still delights in you However you feel about yourself coming out of 2020, God will say to you today, my friends, He has chosen you according to His pleasure and His will. God promised Abraham that He would become a great nation. And to Abraham and his descendants were given the promised land in Canaan. But the physical land was not promised to His spiritual descendants like us. For us, the promised land is but a symbol of the blessing we will inherit in Jesus Christ. What are these blessings? Well, justification, you know, by faith. Forgiveness of sins through repentance, you know, and faith in Christ. Now, instead of being enemies of God, we have become His precious children. Secondly, through Christ, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Those of us who believe in Jesus now have the Holy Spirit living in our lives, transforming us from the inside out. We are empowered for a new way of living, no longer fearful or bounded by darkness. Through the Holy Spirit, we experience God's presence, God's love as we journey through life. Our life takes on new meaning and new purpose. We no longer wander through life aimless we are actually going somewhere in Christ. Ultimately, the Bible tells us these spiritual blessings and the physical blessings of land will come together in the new heaven and new earth when Jesus returns. When God Himself will dwell again with us physically in the new creation. Jesus put it this way, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The question to us as we enter into 2021 is, is this vision, 
Is this still the vision of your life, the vision of abundant living? Sadly, many Christians do not embrace this vision in their life. It can happen to any of us. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians, examine yourselves to see whether you are still in the faith. Test yourselves, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. You see, my friends, the, the truth is this. It happens to all of us. It happens to me. We might have heard that call. We might have even responded to that call. But we could have stopped journeying with the Lord somewhere in our life. You know, in chapter 12 of Genesis, it was not the first time that God came to Abraham. It was the second time. God came to Abraham. God came to his father, Terah, in chapter 11, when they were still living in Ur of the Chaldeans. And God said, uproot and go to Canaan. So they did, if you were to read chapter 11. But halfway through, they settled down in Haran. In chapter 12, when God came to Abraham, Abraham was actually in Haran, not in the promised land. God had to come to him again. and say, Abraham, remember my promise to your father and to you? Now it's time to keep moving. God's word is not just a word of promise, but it is a command that requires a radical response and commitment. That's why Hebrews chapter 6 says this, it is only through faith and through endurance or patience that we will inherit what has been promised. Believing God for His promise is never easy, isn't it? If it is easy, we do not need faith. If it is easy, we do not need God. But God's promise is often beyond our imagination. In fact, many times it is humanly impossible. Now, it is very exciting to receive the promise that God wants to make you into a great nation. Your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky, as the sand in the seashore. Until you look at your wife and you realize that Sarai has passed the age of childbearing. And Sarai is barren and you have no children. Besides that, obedience comes with a risk. You know, when Abraham had to leave his country, his people and his family, in Haran, in Ur of the Chaldean, even before that. You know, through archaeology, we actually know that Abraham's hometown in Ur of the Chaldeans was actually a great and prosperous city at that time. They were well-organized civilization. They had codified laws. They had cuneiform scripts. They, they, they uncovered many precious stones and jewelry. Abraham and his father were actually living in a great civilization, in luxury. And it's out of that prosperity that God is calling him out. It is out of that security that God is calling him out to the unknown. Step forth and I will show you. It requires great faith. Abraham had to leave all that behind to embrace God's promise. He had to learn to live very differently. Remember, he was a pagan worshipper. He did not worship Yahweh. Now he had to worship God and to order his life according to God's ways. Paraphrasing what Jesus said, we have to make a radical commitment. Only when we are prepared to leave home, Jesus says in Mark, 10, uh, Mark chapter 10, to leave home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for Him and the gospel, will we receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields, along with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. Only when we are willing to let go will we be able to receive. Only when we, are able, when we are willing to commit to Jesus radically will the blessings of God flow. And you know what? Our faith will be tested. And that is why we need endurance. It is not just a one-time commitment, but it is a commitment we have to make over and over again. Abraham was tested several times. God had to deal with him. Shortly after the promise that was given to him in chapter 12, if you, if you were to continue reading the story, there was a famine in the land and Abraham had to leave Canaan and seek refuge in Egypt. And when he, when he went to Egypt, you know what he said to Sarai? Oh dear, you look so pretty. You know, the, the Pharaoh and the king would, would want you to be his wife. So you know what? Let's tell them that you are my sister. If not, they will kill me. You know, and they will seize you and I'll lose my life. How many of you want to have a husband who 
is such a coward. Who didn't even dare, who doesn't even dare to say that you are my lovely wife and I will defend you with all my life. Abraham was really a coward. He had to face who he really was. Later, he decided to help God. We all know that story. They discussed between Sarai and himself and he said, hey, you know what? I'm really, I can't, I cannot already. It's impossible. So let me give you my slave girl, Hagar. And maybe through her, God will give you us, you know, the promised child. They decided to help God out. But that was not to be the case. They had to wait 25 years after he left Haran before the promised son Isaac would be born. Then again, when Isaac was born, became a teenager, God tested Abraham. Chapter 22, God told him to sacrifice Isaac. You know, Abraham had grown in his faith by that time. And Abraham, the, the New Testament tells us, believed that if God wanted me to sacrifice my son, even though it is not his nature, but in ways that I cannot understand, if God wants to raise him up from the dead, God can and God will. And so he decided not to withhold Isaac. But God was testing him. God doesn't want child sacrifice. God, child, children sacrif uh, child sacrifice, uh, sacrifice was actually an abomination to the Lord. It's very clear in the Bible. God was testing Abraham. And when God saw that Abraham would not hold on to this tangible proof of his promise, but put his faith in God alone, God said to him, By myself I have sworn, because you have done this and not withheld your son, I will indeed bless you. Can you see how Abraham had grown? Facing his own ugliness, cowardice, his own fear, to trying to help God out, to finally saying, God, in you alone I trust. I will follow you alone. Stage by stage, Abraham's had, uh, faith grew and developed. Against all hope, Romans 4 says, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. I do not know how your journey with God is today. I do not know how 2020 has been for all of you. But in His grace, God comes to us with His invitation over and over again in our life. And this is what the covenant service this weekend is all about. The first weekend of the year, we gather as God's people of faith, Abraham's seeds and descendants, and we will say to God, we will journey with you. God is calling us to press on in our journey with Jesus Christ once again. What would your response be? I want to encourage us and invite us to all come before the Lord individually, as a, as a family unit, and as a church. And recommit our lives to Jesus. Say, Lord, it is not by my strength, it is not by my merits, but it is by faith in you alone. Help me to follow you closely in 2021 and help me to see your blessing and your will coming to fulfillment in my life this 